Coming to you from an undisclosed location somewhere deep in the heart of the Santa Monica Mountains, I'm your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli, and this is On the Trail of the Nephilim. Thanks so much for joining us here on On the Trail of the Nephilim, our new YouTube show. Uh, we, we talk about giants and the Nephilim and, of course, our daily UFO update. I think you'll find everything we do today pretty interesting. I just want to once again express our condolences to Russ's family, to Shelly, who's in hospital, and she's apparently getting better. But um, it shocked all of us. It continues to uh, weigh heavily on me. Russ was a very close friend. And uh, we couldn't walk in a room without looking at each other and just bursting out in the laughter. I miss him already. And I, as I said in Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural today, um, that mourning is something that you just, it's a switch, and you can't turn it on or off. It just happens. It's visceral. And uh, yesterday I was not in a good place. And I was mourning for my dear friend and continue to do so today. But it's it's better today than it was yesterday, which is why we're here. So um, thank you all for, I had a lot of emails and texts from folks yesterday expressing uh, their condolences, and I appreciate that. Uh, we are talking about giants in America, and we'll get into giants in South America, and I think you'll find this really interesting. But first, a word from our sponsor, Virtual Shield. A bicyclist in Florida got a strange email from Google. It said law enforcement was requesting his user data. He had 10 days to go to court if he wanted to fight it. The bicyclist later found out he was a suspect in a burglary. His Google location pinged him near the scene of the crime nearly one year ago. Law enforcement wanted access to his cell phone. However, he was innocent. He was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. But his phone seemed to have betrayed him. This is why a VPN like Virtual Shield is so important. Virtual Shield can hide your location from Czech giants, on top of already hiding your internet history from your ISP. Using a VPN prevents tech companies and law enforcement from false accusations like what they did to that man on that bicycle. I highly recommend Virtual Shield VPN get 50% off for life with a free 30-day trial only by downloading it today. Please go to virtualshield forward slash la.com. Once again, that's virtual shield forward slash la.com or click the link below to start. If you come here and you don't find us, you can, or you're looking for politics, prophecy, and a supernatural report, please go to Rumble, BitChute, or Roku. The links are right, right here, right on the screen. You should be able to see them. Our Rumble account, that's where we do the full Monty, which is everything uh, necessary, appropriate, and uh, no holds barred. So check that out. But thank you for coming here. And we will continue our series on the Trail of the Nephilim. So last week I talked about the museum. It's called the Gold Museum. It's in Lima. Okay. I've only been there one time. Um, and when you go there, uh, there's the guards are all over the place because you can see here that everything is gold. Everything is gold in the museum, pretty much, which is why they call it the Gold Museum. And, and we have all these artifacts. And I remember going up to the, one of the, the guards there, and the guy, the guy was armed. And I said, let me ask you something. We heard rumors um, that 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago, whatever, there were giant mummies here. Shook his head. He had never heard anything about that. And, and, I, and I said, well, you know, how long have you been here? Two years. So is it possible that the entire staff changed? Someone knew about this. Okay, here's another shot that I took, and you can see the very large, uh, these were like sleeves that went into someone's hand, and, and all these spears are very, very large. All that's still on display, but guess what? And this, this I just want to show you this real quick. That's the, the email, and I'm not going to give the guy's email uh, address, but thank you, Gordon, for doing this. And you can see Subject Lima, Peru. He found this old, old YouTube video. And in it is, is a very fuzzy shot, but later on, there's a close-up. And I'll show you that in just a second. And it's as close as I've ever gotten. And I just want to thank, you know, let me, let me just say this, that a lot of you watch the show, and some of you take time and you go out and you explore 
or you write me and, hey, L.A., there's a mound over here. Or L.A., I had this newspaper clip from the 60s, which I've held for some odd reason, that talks about a giant found in the mound, all that kind of stuff. And you send them to me. Thank you so much. So if you've got stories like that, if you have a mound and you live in Ohio, we can come and excavate it. We have a war chest. We would love to do that legally. Archaeologists, anthropologists, and, of course, Chief Joseph Riverwood, who will be on our show tomorrow, by the way, talking about his new book, um, the chief uh, is always there with us to make sure that it's everything is done in a very proper way. So anyway, let's move on. So once again, gold for the gods, the gold museum. So here's the actual skull. All right. And to the right of it, this is what it looked like. This is how big this guy would have been just because of the skull. So once again, what I had heard that, that the uh, the king and queen were seated on gold thrones next to each other. That might not be the case. Here's, here's what it might have looked like. So you've got the, the queen is on the right, the king is on the left. All right. Let's go back here. So there's, there's another shot of it. Um, very, very interesting. So when you, when you take the size of a skull and you put it next and, and you just attach it to a body, this is what you get. This is very common. The Wakaros, the grave robbers, did find stuff like this all the time. And the Wakaros, the reason why they ply their trade is because of this, because of the gold that's found in these sites. So this is total conjecture on my part. Rather than bring the entire skeleton in, the Wakaro took the head and the crown and brought it and, you know, maybe had a picture of it and brought it to the museum. They probably paid him you know, a couple of thousand dollars for it or whatever, and it wound up in the museum. What's interesting, and this is the whole point of this show, what is interesting here is, guess what? They're not there anymore. They are not there anymore. You say, well, well it's because of NAGPRA, Native American Grave uh, Protection and Repatriation Act, which goes from North America to the North Pole down to Tierra del Fuego. But it's not, it's not held sacrosanct in places like Peru because uh, in, in the Ica Museum, the elongated skulls are displayed in Senor Juan's private museum. The elongated skulls are displayed in all over um, Lima and, and Cusco. They're displayed. So that's nonsense. Something else is going on here at the, um, at the Gold Museum. So this is, again, the one on the right is a little fuzzy. I get that. That probably is the queen. The one on the left is the king. Why? Why is this taken down? Why was this removed from public viewing? And they can't say, well, it's because of NAGPRA, because, you know, there were elongated skulls everywhere, all over Peru. So that's nonsense. There's something else that's going on here. Because it points to the veracity of a hidden history, which has been deliberately obfuscated from the peoples of the world. Folks, this is proof. And this is how big this guy would have been in life. Basically, you're looking at about a 15-footer, 12 to 15 feet. Giants roam the Americas. Giants roam the Americas. In our ancient civilization, we sit down with Mondo Gonzalez, and we, this is part seven of the Amatrail series, and we talk to Mondo. And Mondo talks about a, a stele which was found um, centuries ago. It's, it's no longer there in Africa. But it said this, We are they who fled from Joshua the robber, the son of Nun. We are they who fled from Joshua the robber, the son of Nun. Folks, there was a diaspora of Nephilim tribes. Not only did they put, push westward, but they may have gone down the Red Sea and out and over uh, the Pacific Ocean to Peru. All we know is that this artifact was at one time on display. It was real. And there's an illustration of what it might have looked like. And you can see behind behind the two giants, and, and Giant, please show that, um, on the illustration here, we see the giant stones of Sacsayhuaman. Why is this swept under the rug? Why can't we see it? Why can't we do DNA testing on it? It just amazes me how everything is controlled. Everything is controlled. And here we have proof that at one time, at one time, this giant skull was displayed openly in the museum along with the queen. You can see the, the shoulders. This is obviously a female, all the decorations around it. Um, 
man, I'd love to get a better picture of this. Love to get a better picture. If you want more, please go to streaming.lamarzuli.net, streaming.lamarzuli.net. Download all seven of them. What are you waiting for? We are on the trail, and we will continue to be on the trail of a Nephilim. There is an ancient site in New Hampshire that may date back 4,000 years. It is called America's Stonehenge. There are precise alignments of standing stones, which reflect the solstices and equinoxes. There is also a controversial stone table, which may have been used as an altar for human sacrifice. The site is built on an 18 and a half year lunar cycle, like that of Stonehenge, England, and also the Great Circle Mount and the Octagon Mount complex in Ohio. And America's Stonehenge massive stones were fitted together to create this mysterious site, but whoever built it seemingly abandoned it. You will see just how incredible this site is as we reveal what appears to be a deliberate and orchestrated relationship to Stonehenge, England, as well as other megalithic sites around the globe. Journey with us as we explore America's Stonehenge. Moving right along into our UFO presentation today, I think you'll find this one really interesting. Last week we were talking about cattle mutilations and just how a, a beam of light, ranchers would see sometime a beam of light come down and the cow would be caught up in it. I get that. But what happens when that beam of light is directly overhead and you're in it? And I think you'll find this testimony very interesting. I know I did. With Pentagon UFO unit in the spotlight, report mentions off-world vehicles not made on this earth. There it is. There it is. Your government is telling you that the phenomenon is real. So moving right along, this is a shot of what it might look like if you're under that light. And let me tell you something, folks, that's the last place you want to be. 
is, is in that beam of light. This is a, um, and I've got to get really close because I, I couldn't enlarge this, but this is this what came in from a woman who wants to remain anonymous. My husband has been bugging me to share my story with you. First of all, thank you, husband, who remains anonymous. I appreciate it. And thank you for this woman's courage to come forward. Folks, if you've got stories like this, shoot me an email with them. LA at LAMarzuli.net. LA at LAMarzuli.net. My husband has been bugging me to share my story with you. I'm not ready to be on TV or have my name out there. So I'm sharing this anonymously. One evening in 1987 in Central Texas, I was actually at my mother's house, which is out in the country. My mom, sister, brother, his girlfriend, and myself were all outside in front of the house. My mom's car was pulled up on the side of the yard. Stop right there. I love this because there's detail. There's detail. She remembers it vividly. It's not something that's fuzzy. My sister, myself, and my brother's girlfriend were all standing in a half circle by the car. So it's my sister, myself, and my brother's girlfriend. Three women, three girls, are in like a semicircle, all right? Another detail. With my mom and brother standing out in front of us. The only light on was on the front porch. Being out in the country, it's rather dark. No street lights. All of a sudden, there was a change in the atmosphere. I can't tell you how many times I've heard this. This is hard for me to explain. I don't know how to put it in, into words, but it was like all of a sudden the air became completely still. All outside noise was gone. Folks, this is, this is one of the hallmarks. The crickets are chirping. The cicadas are going. You know, there's a little bit of wind rustling. All of a sudden, everything is dead quiet. Something has moved into the area and literally changed the atmosphere. And guess what? It's not a good thing. So let's move on. The air was completely still. As my sister, my brother's girlfriend, and I were standing close to the car, this beam of light big enough that all three of us were inside the light came straight down. I remember looking up and it was like there was something right above the treetops. I could not make out what it was, but it was just hovering over the treetop. As we were standing in this beam of light, we were all frozen in place. All of a sudden, someone screamed, and when they screamed, it just kind of snapped me out of uh, like a daze or something like that. I was just so fixed on looking up, but when someone screamed, we all jumped out of the light. As fast as the light appeared, it was just gone. The one thing I do remember, as it wasn't like the light just disappeared, the light retracted back up. Another detail. So the light just didn't go poof. It like it was like a beam of light that descended and then was kind of rolled back up. It, in other words, she even says it. The light retracted back up. But it happened so quickly. I mean, this is just seconds. This all happened in literal seconds. We all just looked at each other. And in shock, going, did that just happen? We were all questioning each other. Did you see that? Did you feel that? Did you feel how the air changed? Did you see the light? It was like we all had to ask each other about the experience, even though we were all standing there together. It was just so unreal that this could actually happen. It was hard just to mentally accept the experience we all had just had together. After this experience, my brother, during the daytime, was on the back of our property taking pictures. And in one of those pictures, he downloaded it onto the computer. There was a silver disc hovering over one of the trees. I asked him if it was a joke or he had just made the picture up. He absolutely and adamantly swore that the picture was real. Unfortunately, I, I did not think to ask him to send me a copy of the picture. And at this time, it is no longer a possibility for me to get a copy. This is my absolute true statement. I have no reason to share this. I don't want anything for sharing. And I kindly ask that you not share my name. And of course, we're not. I do want to say thank you for making it possible for people who have had experiences like this to feel that there is some legitimacy to the experience they've had. Thank you and God bless. Folks, this is why people write me because they know I'm not going to go, oh, well, maybe you need to get a checkup mentally. I believe their story. The detail here is incredible. So this is what happened in my opinion. Let, let's go back and sort of dissect this. The beam of light comes down. Basically, all three girls are about to be taken. But I, don't, I think one of the women, and this would be very interesting to go back and ask her, um, one of the woman, women, in my opinion, 
has been taken before. Now that's conjecture. It'd be very interesting to see if we could trace track this down and see. I would I would posit that someone, one of those women in that in that group of three standing in the circle, had been taken before, and the other two uh, were about to be taken also, possibly. But they were after the one. They were after the one. And isn't it interesting how just a few days later the brother takes a picture and there, I wish I had that shot, is a silver disc over the treetops. Folks, UFOs are real, burgeoning, not going away. Even the elect would be deceived if that were possible. Jesus warns us of this. Something is happening. The church needs to understand and wake up that it is happening and that it's not going away. UFOs are real, burgeoning, and not going away. And we need to get to the bottom of it, which is why I created the free film. Free. Get that free film, UFO disclosure. Watch it, folks. Watch it several times. It's that important. It will arm you with the truth. At the very end of the film, after all the credits, and you can watch it or not watch it, there's sort of a call to action. What I mean by that, there's a call to give your life to Jesus. Because there is a power that is greater than these powers. That scream, maybe they were believers, I don't know. I need to get more information. I'm going to write her today and follow up on this. But there is a power that is greater than he that is in the world. And that power is our Redeemer. Thanks so much for watching on the trail of a Nephilim and our special UFO report. So we'll see you right back here tomorrow. And remember, we'll see you on the air or in the air. Thanks so much for watching. I've seen a UFO. I've seen a UFO. And I saw a UFO. I saw a UFO. A UFO.